Hey, how's it going? My name's Nat. Let's see what's making news. A group of students in Pakistan have had a pretty eventful trip to school, including a 14-hour rescue mission and some very high heights. Here's Josh to fill you in. Yep, this cable car dangling 275 metres above the ground has seven students and one adult on board. They were actually on their way to school when they got stuck halfway across. You see, here in Pakistan, cable cars aren't just a fun local attraction. They're actually a common mode of transport because they make it easier to get from village to village when there are lots of big mountains involved. So what started as an average school day turned out to be anything but when one of the cables snapped. Cue dramatic rescue scene. Yep, locals and authorities quickly jumped into action. A military helicopter dropped off food and water and, most importantly, rescued two of the students. But then things got even more complicated when the chopper was deemed too dangerous in the wind to go back and get the others. So it was time to bring in the zip lining experts, who used makeshift chairlifts to bring each and every one of them back to land safely. Oh All up, the rescue took 14 hours. And I think it's safe to say these students will be looking forward to a normal school day once they've recovered. Prime Minister Anthony Albanese says he'll announce the date for the Indigenous Voice to Parliament referendum next week. The date's been hotly anticipated because it's when Australians will vote either yes or no to whether a voice should be added to our constitution. At the moment, people think it'll likely be held in mid-October, but the Prime Minister will let us know the exact date at an event in Adelaide next Wednesday. Now to a story that's all about shoveling coal. Here's Justina. Ready, set, go! Welcome to the Coal Shoveling Championship at the 2023 Maura Coal and Country Festival, where, as the name suggests, competitors shovel coal against the clock to see who can fill their cart to 508 kilograms in the quickest time. And this is my first year doing coal shoveling and I've won and I've came second place. Me too. Oh, we, we actually really did good. pretty well. Yeah. Last year we did a bit worse. We were the yeah. only girls in it. And this year we had two other teams of girls and we actually beat them. The event's held every year right here in Maura, which has been a mining town for six decades. The trolleys that we use were originally used in the underground mines back in the day. So what makes a good coal shoveler? Get the shovel and scoop and get it into a little bucket. Make sure your shovel is full and a lot of teamwork. Communication is key. Yes. The winners are around that mid-30 seconds, so if you, if you shovel under 40 seconds, you're very competitive. Whoa, sounds like a lot of hard work. Yeah, sort of. Not really. Oh, well, it definitely looks like a lot of fun. Even if you don't win, it's all about like getting the whole community together to support, and small businesses is great for them. Mm. Oh, now it's time to wrap up the show with some stories about lucky finds. First up to a spotless giraffe in the United States. That's right, this little fella was born just a few weeks ago without spots, which is very rare. The last known spotless giraffe was born in Japan way back in 1972, so it's thought to be the only one in the world at the moment. Zookeepers here at Bright Zoo in Tennessee hope all the attention can shine a light on giraffe conservation and have put out the call for name suggestions. Now to an eye test that could help find early signs of Parkinson's, which is a disorder that affects the body's central nervous system. The researchers behind it are using the same eye testing equipment you'd find at the optometrists, but they're training AI to detect changes in the eye's retina. There's still a long way to go before this new technique gets approval, but scientists here are hopeful. And finally, to Tasmania, where this photo of the seafloor has scientists from the CSIRO feeling rather giddy. Specifically because of this fish, which they reckon could be the elusive narrow-body handfish. The last time one was spotted was 27 years ago, and they've only ever been seen a few times by scientists. It was found during a research voyage, looking at how climate change was affecting marine life. <laughs> Oh, that's where that was. <laughs> that's all from us today. We'll see you tomorrow. Bye.